I think this is the first year I'm really exposing this, talking about inventory. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm, I might be educating too many realtors with this information because it's 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 this haul you're gonna plan to buy well and sell well. Hey guys, Steve Zonardo and Hussein Gabandi with East Meets West podcast. We're here uh, to do a nice. Uh, to what's our topic today? We've got uh, we got a question. We got a question, question. from uh, first time buyer, millennial, mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have uh, we're going to discuss when we are listing your house. Should we or should they should the seller decide to go with the multiple offer route or just list it at fair market value? So bidding war or not bidding war? Yes, that's right. Fair enough. Okay, good. We could touch base a little bit on, on mindset at the end. Yes. And know where we go. Okay, yeah. Cool, buddy. Yeah, man. So you want to start off with your week and yeah. progress? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so week has actually been uh, really good. Not so much in terms of like a lot of production, but like sure. a lot of phone calls. Like I'd yeah. say like inquiries in terms of coming in every day, like one to three inquiries every single day, uh, been on appointments every single day so far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A uh, lot of, lot more people are starting to get in now. And I think it probably has to do a little bit with the weather too. Course, we've yeah. seen a little bit of yeah. improved weather yeah. and the phone's just been ringing. So like we've got a bunch of buyers that want to, we're going to be meeting with and a lot of people looking to sell their homes. But like we were talking about, like the challenge that will come in is, is that you got to try to get them into the market. Like people that want to sell their homes like very quickly, I'd say okay. two, three weeks max, you want to kind of get them into the yeah, market go, and, go. Yeah, and get them out. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of activity. We had one of our listings that uh, we listed like three months ago um, for like just under 1.2 mil. Uh, after a couple of price drops, uh, you know, we positioned it in a way to get multiple offers. We'll get into that. So we did end up getting yeah. something on it. It's conditional. So yeah, things are moving That's reasonably good. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah, uh, appointments a little quieter last week, I'd imagine. Even the open actually open house was pretty good, but just calls. Uh, did a few sales too last week, which is good. Nice. Actually, I did one last. Last night we conditionally sold it, nice. and uh, just just the power of price adjustment. You know, we went on a price uh, at our client's uh, price, and I kind of gave them a range where it was, you know, uh, you know, it was a very uh, tight range, about a forty k range over a one point two million dollar property, and we ended up selling just just actually above a little bit above where I was uh, indicating where we're going to sell. So which is good, and again price adjustment. Yeah. Bang. Soon we price adjustment. Literally within three days, we had boom and an offer, and it's over. It's going to be if we sell this property at this current price because it's conditional, it'll blow any other bungalow that's awesome. in, in the area, which is awesome. So that's cool. Um, uh, inventory. Did you see the inventory pick up? Yeah, I it's a, huge. I took a snapshot. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Stores. What you did? Yeah, <laughs> two hundred and fourteen yeah. actions taken in, in Vaughn, and yeah. like it was uh, one listing per hour. Imagine it, it was starts at, at uh, maybe 12, 12 p.m. Yeah, and then we're at that was what fourteen hours later, it was around two o'clock or something like that. And uh, but imagine if people start putting listings maybe nine ten a.m. Yeah. So imagine nine a.m. to like two p.m. It's like 15 listings in a little pocket. Yeah. Not to mention like Barry Angus, like 40 listings by that point. Yeah. And Toronto already had 64. So yeah, you're, you're starting that, that flood See, finally opened up. Right? This, this verifies what I just said too, right? Yeah. Like the, the amount of activity, the inquiries that are coming in are huge right now. But this is not this is not rocket science. Yeah. I don't know how other people are not, not catching on to this. Yeah. I think this is the first year I'm really exposing this, talking about inventory. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, I might be educating too many realtors with this information because it's 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 this haul you're gonna plan to buy well and sell well, right? Yeah, of course. This is this is right now. Like I, I see in my Insta story, it was like, okay, now it's uh, it's almost time to buy, right? Yeah. And uh, now just unload the last forty days here, maybe thirty days. Yeah, that's all you got left. Ready to start buying. Yeah. By mid June, by mid June, to end of July, June, like you're done. Yeah. yeah like yeah. in terms of selling, you're done. If you're on the market yeah. and you, you're gonna be stuck. I have another listing too. I'm I'm trying to get it. Uh, I was supposed to get it in, in the beginning, end of April, into the beginning of, of May. I've been yeah. Like, sort of begging the lady, right? And it's just, there's a pushback with, with one of the family members in the house that's kind of slowing the process. But it's, it's, uh, it's you know, if you want to net the most money, we got to get to the market now. Yeah. I understand yeah. there's feelings and bad feelings in, internally in the house. But again, this is all, my job is just to make it the most money. And timing yeah. is the key to this, right? Yeah. So. Well, with real estate, we know that there's so many uh, emotional aspects involved, right? Yeah. Like there's the family thing. There's a whole emotional thing about selling the property or buying a property. So, Well, I, I sold my family home in 2017. I, I know the emotions. I yeah. actually had an, another realtor act for me because it was too emotional, yeah. the whole process. But at the same time, you, you know, you, you go through the emotions uh, and you talk about it. Yeah. And then you kind of push through it and you get it listed because that's the whole point. We've got to get this thing on the market. Yeah, you got to get so, You got to go. So I'm pushing a little bit. So, good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so far everything's good, man. 
Uh, only recommendation, like what you said to people, is like if you're going to sell your house, get it on now. Yeah, it's really uh, yeah, like get it on now. Yeah. yeah, and get ready to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, it, this would work out the perfect uh, the perfect way that you were saying before too. Is is like you know get your house on the market right now, get it sold within the next four weeks. Yeah, uh, and then try to see if you can even try to get a little bit of a longer closing or something yeah. like that. And then you could actually go out, maybe take a few weeks off of the housing market or whatever, and then go out and buy. For sure, you probably get a really good deal on Great something. Great deal, and all yeah. my closings. I think we've done, I'm at 40, 44% of my total goal for this year yeah. already financially, yeah, commission nice. wise, which is good. And all these sales are all pushed. Like yeah. even for we started in January, like they're all pushed into like July yeah. and August. Yeah. It's like we're not getting paid anything. We're, we're no. suffering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our yeah. day to day never stops and money keeps getting drained. But yeah. uh, at the same time, it's like we pushed everything out for the whole reason being is because we'll have an opportunity to buy at a lower price. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's, it's taking the client's best interest first rather than, uh, yeah. you know floating the books temporarily right I, I have a good feeling that buyers that are going to be out in the market oh, july yeah. august are going to be able to get some I'm fantastic deals I have, yeah i have two investment properties i gotta re-pick up yeah right because we sold two of them we unloaded i got two more i gotta pick up yeah so we're gonna create like i said two duplexes yeah. so i'm gonna put uh, trading my four greenhouses for my uh, you know let's say one hotel yeah. times two so yeah it's gonna be good two duplexes with buildable or uh developable uh, lots yeah right? double yeah. lots where i can subdivide them and build two houses which awesome is the goal yeah cool yeah yeah, cool. All right then. Your question. Yeah, so we got a question in yeah. um, from uh, from a, from a viewer actually from our podcast, uh, and he's basically uh, 21 years old, uh, turning 22. He's got about fifty thousand dollars in savings, Good which money. is great. Yeah, which Congrats. is great. Yeah, man, that's, that's amazing. Fantastic. Fifty. Yeah, to have fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah, I did not have Talking that. Talking about forty-eight percent of people in Ontario are two hundred dollars away from insolvency, yeah. and he's twenty-one. He's got. 50K. He's doing amazing. Yeah, he's doing amazing. Uh, staying with the parents. And above. Yeah, staying with the parents, which is great. Yeah. Saving cash, amazing. I love it. Um, you know, the question was, is that uh, you know, how like what? How should he go about buying his first property? Um, and you know, uh, like I was around his age when I started to do my first thing, except I had like, uh, you know, $5,000 and it wasn't even my money, it was my mom's money yeah. for the most part, right? Um, but he's in a good situation. Um, and I kind of cheated on this a little bit because I've done a presentation before for like a, a, a high school and it really just comes down to like the compound interest. And I would say in his situation, being 21 years old and staying with his folks, I would say that if he's comfortable staying with his folks, I would just do that at the age of 21 right now. Okay. You know, I would go out and buy that property for sure. I would go out and buy that property, um, but I would actually just stay with my folks if, if my living condition is fine. And, and that's exactly, at 21, I bought my first rental property off campus residence. By 23, I had three properties, 14 yeah. tenants, right? But I lived at home the whole time. Yeah. There was no point of leaving. Yeah. Uh, because if you, if you leave home, like, it's so magic. You got, you're going to uh, introduce this investment model here. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, if he moves into the property, he's going to he's on the hook for the actual expenses. Yes. He gets it leased out and lives at home with his pro uh, parents temporarily. Yeah. He's going to have an opportunity to bank more money and have an opportunity to buy a second, third property. For sure. Once you lock into a personal residence, yeah. there's a lot of bills and yeah. a lot of that cash flow gets eaten up. So yeah. if you can stick yeah. it out for, let's say, even another three to four years. Yeah. So, so, so the way I would explain it is my approach to it would be, uh, and there's a couple of ways of doing it. I know, you know, he has $50,000, but maybe my approach at this point would be is, is that I, I may not spend my whole $50,000 yeah, on his first sure. property. I'll yeah. try to get away with a 5% down payment. 10, yeah. yeah. If, if like, so my math, my math is based on 5% down payment. Um, so there was like a condo I was looking at, at uh, Young and Shepherd on Beecroft. Mm -hmm. You get a one bedroom, uh, one parking uh, with a locker. You can pick that up for around 443 on average. So I use that number, 443, you put a 5% down payment. Uh, you're a first time home buyer. Entire closing costs and everything else like that is just under $30,000. So, you know, to, to pay your 5% down payment, to pay the CMHC. What the, is the property, land transfer tax? The land transfer tax was $10,000. I have the exact number here. So it was like just under $10,000. Uh, if you if you were not a first time, sorry, it was like $10,670 for land transfer tax. But after being a first time buyer, uh, you would it's end up paying like about $2,200. Yeah, so you'd end up paying $2,200 in land transfer tax. So it was $2,200 in land transfer tax. If you bought this property, it's $22,000 in a down payment. Uh, and then with the CMAT, uh, you, your insurance actually gets added to your mortgage, but you have to pay the PST portion on the insurance. So that would have been uh, for just under $1,400. 
lawyer fees, land, land title is like, you know, 1800 bucks. Yeah. So total cost would be about $28,000, just under $28,000 to get into this property. I think we're going to have a mix, mix on what he wants to, what, what he should buy and what he shouldn't buy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Have mixed feelings for sure. That. For sure. Because you're going to go which route. <laughs> for sure. For sure. But, but like, look, all things considered, right? Just, just in terms of this yeah. example and, and like we could definitely drill down a little bit further if he wants and show him the, the differences between a freehold and a, a condo, oh, no. right? Um, so, but essentially what would end up happening is, is that I would, and I don't know if you'd agree, I would reasonably say over the long period of time looking at things like three and a half percent would be average appreciation on a property. I, I tend to think it might be a little bit higher course, overall. Yeah, no, that's, that's very Yeah, but I would say it would be conservative. Yeah. Like I, I don't think you'd have problems hitting no, that no, number. No, 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 no. Yeah, sure. so, so the math I basically did was is that if you purchase uh, at $433,000 and use an appreciation rate of three and a half percent year over year, um, you know, based on your mortgage balance coming down, so the equity that you have and taking out the original $28,000 that you've put in, in the first five years of ownership, if you go to sell that property, paying the realtor commission, uh, taking out your original investment into the property, you would still net out around $80,000 in five years. Yeah. So that's amazing, right? Like so uh, 20,000, 28,000 in, and then you're going to get 80,000 back. So yeah. What's the return? But that's you even taking your money back out. Yeah. 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 So yeah. otherwise you get 110 back, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what is that? So that's uh, so 28,000 on, on 80 <clears throat> case. So yeah. what's, what's the return on investment? Eighty five thousand, you said. You get uh, eighty k. It's, it's like thirty three percent return. Yeah, perfect. Freaking beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I think that's an easy one to execute because, like, uh, if if I like, I lived at uh, that building, right? So I know what the area is like completely, and I know what the rental market is like. Uh, and you rent that thing out, no problem, if you wanted to. Yeah. And if you go ahead and rent it out, you'd actually end it up with more money because this is this factors in you living into the property. Fair enough, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because the thing is, whatever your monthly expenses are, more or less, even at five percent down, will be outweighed by the rent. Like yeah. you might be out of pocket, you know, three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars a month, maybe at five percent down but you would be getting a ton of money back in and that number could easily be $100,000. It's the mortgage pay down and offsets. I think everybody yeah. forgets about the mortgage pay down. Yeah. Like that's liquid cash. It's just, it's invisible yeah. because it's built into the equity yeah. of the property. Like I, I even yeah. put it in over here, right? So the thing is, is that, uh, you know, you, you'd start off with the purchase price of $433,000 in five years. Like at the end of your five year term, you would owe like 378 on the property. Yeah. Yeah. 378, which yeah. is Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. And and now, like, look, uh, like I don't think you'd hold on to this another, property another for that 10%, long. Just yeah, an equity. Yeah. yeah. So, so if we just played this thing out, okay? And I did a twenty-year projection on this one unit. So if you bought this one unit and did a twenty-year projection out on it, and I did it in five-year intervals, right? So on the first year, after getting rid of your expenses, uh, taking everything out, you'd get about eighty k in cash. Like yeah. at the end of the day, you have eighty k. Yeah. If you waited 10 years to pull your money out and sell this unit, you'd have like $240,000. Yeah. 240,000. At 15 years, you would have $435,000. And at 20 years, 665. When I was 21 years old, my mom, because they weren't, they didn't even know I bought houses. I literally went out, bought a house, and I came home with this, with a, hey guys, I just bought a house kind of thing deal. My dad almost had a stroke. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, it was a bigger deal back then, right? Well, they didn't yeah. ever, they never expected yeah. a 21 year old to like go out. Usually you buy, car or not even you buy I don't junk. Know, like uh, yeah. shit right yeah so i went on and buy a house, bought a house and my, my dad had a, had a, a panic attack but i told my, my mom i said this is i'm planting my ferrari i said yeah i go in 10 in 10 years when this is paid for 10 15 years it'll be paid in cash even if the value doesn't go up and it's it just like, gets paid off there were one hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchases yeah even if i just sold it at 150k it's it's my ferrari i just yeah. planted my Ferrari. that was my mentality going in that's the same thing like that's planting your your future yeah um, but I, so, so condos are one thing. I, I still think you like resale, right? Resale, uh, uh, you know, low rise construction in the sense where there's no condo fees and stuff like that. The thing I don't like about condo fees, they never get lower. They just keep increasing. Yeah. And it always takes away from your net at the yeah. end. And then when you're trying to sell the property, you're competing against 20, 30 units in the building. It's like, it's like, I don't know, there's a leverage point. It's an easy investment condo, but I, I find it. Like long term, it's always going to be uh, low rise residential. I, I, I think low rise. I, I think you're right. Yeah. And and my only thing, and, and going back to what we talked about last week, my only thing is is just the barrier to entry. That that's yeah, the only thing. But yeah. but if well, 50K, if he's yeah, good. but exactly. So he, if he, he has fifty k, five hundred k, like or maybe you know four hundred thousand yeah. dollars, he could buy a freehold property, yeah. four hundred thousand dollars 
rent it out. He do. You, it depends on his income and stuff yeah. like that, right? But so he'd have to still qualify at the same yeah. rates over here because he'd have the purchase price and then he'd have the uh, condo fee against him as well, right? Yeah, on his yeah, debt yeah. service ratio. But even with this too, like I think he, so he's got fifty k to spend. Even yeah. if he joined venture, if he got family member, friends, somebody you can trust, that's got someone that's business minded. Even if he just put out. Let's say they put 25K, uh, you know, each into two different investments. They buy two properties rather than one, right? Yeah. And they sort of kind of build this conglomerate right now. And then have like a, a you know, a five-year plan with with whoever's with them. And five years, we'll check in. We might flip the property at this yeah. time and cash out. You do your own thing. And might do, like be transparent. See, I've had a negative experience with that. And, and I mean, of course, like uh, I think we're going to continue in the future and, uh, you know, probably do more joint ventures with other people. But uh, in general, like with my first uh, with my first partnership with somebody on a yeah. on a property, it just didn't work out so well. No, it's 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 all about trust. But yeah. a lot of them do, right? Think yeah. about the big ventures out there, like Greybrook Realty, right? Yeah. I put money in. That's that's huge partnerships yeah. with everybody, right? So yeah. I think if you can start building that that know how now, you start these little joint ventures. At least you're gonna learn from it. So I wouldn't say I'd be against him trying it, but yeah. like uh, I would say at least you learn from it. Like say whatever I learned from my experience of going into this property. Luckily, we were still profitable coming out of the thing. Like yeah. I think each of us made like seventy thousand dollars on the property so was, within like, within a year and a half. Well, that's what I'm saying. Have like a, yeah. a be transparent. So yeah. Let's check in in five years. The goal is one to five years. But let's you know what? Yeah, like yeah. when the mortgage renews. Yeah. Let's check in. If we want to continue. We could say that, marriage. right? Yeah, but we could say that. And this is like when I purchased this property no, know, with this person, yeah. I said I'm never selling it, and they're on board. <laughs> I said never, never selling it. I'm not going to sell it. But you know. Price goes up and I'm like, oh, well, my money. So, okay, but, sometimes but you learn from it. Yeah, yeah. So, so now I'm still in a partnership with some other people. But the thing is, is that these guys are like really like long-term investors. They know that they've put money into something and they're not going to see that for 20 years. Like they're okay with that. You know what I mean? So, so you learn from it. But joint ventures are good, right? hundred percent. It's like, like a marriage. Some people get divorced. Some people stay married. Right? Like I'm stay sure that there is some idea. stuff that you have bought and I know I have bought that there's no way I would have been able to do it on my own. I know. Yeah. A lot of the times it's, it's, you know what, it, it, it lessens the risk. Yeah. Naturally, you're not as exposed. Yep. And, uh, and it's, it's a little bit of a confidence barrier because if the rent doesn't come in one month or something like that, you have you can split that down the sure. middle. And yeah. not only that, you got better buying power. So yeah. let's just say he's got 50K, the other guy's got 50K. Let's yeah. say they even have a third guy and the other guy's got 50K. Yeah. They got 150K. They can buy a nice uh, fourplex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now yeah. they have an actual building. Yeah. So they've jumped into it. You know how it is when you get sure. a fourplex or a threeplex or a triplex. Your your income passive income is a lot better than any for sure. You're see yeah. in a single, in a single you don't want a single door. Uh, not to mention you can leverage that property a lot more. So let's just say at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, they have three guys. It's maybe an eight hundred thousand dollar purchase yeah. or something of that nature, right? Yeah. Holy shit! You yeah. can start you know leveraging that property and start uh, you know pulling out equity and start buying other yeah. stuff with it. Yeah. So yeah. So we kind of like uh, given like a huge array yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, options yeah, yeah. and whatever else yeah. like that but like you know at the end of the day like this just is something <laughs> yeah just do just it do it. just yeah. do it but the, but like i mean just for the purpose of this podcast we can't uh, get very personal we don't know uh, the no, whole no, background no, no, no. information just, just, but yeah. but this is something that you know we could help somebody plan out do you know what i mean like if we get to know what they are what their income looks like because they ultimately have to qualify for a mortgage regardless if you, even if you have two hundred thousand dollars you still need to get a mortgage yeah, yeah. um so yeah, you know work work out a kind of a plan like, look, yesterday, uh, yesterday I met with somebody that just kind of had, you know, the short end of the stick handed to them all the time when they've done a transaction, but they had some good equity in their property and they were just going to sell that property. They want to sell that property and just buy a bigger property and put all the money into it. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, you have decent, you have decent equity. Yeah. Like I wouldn't do that if I were you. And you know, they're probably in their mid to late forties, um, into the fifties uh, possibly. And they have, uh, some time where they can actually build some wealth still. So I didn't think they, they thought they had the hope of doing something like this. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, is that they probably end up with like three hundred and fifty, four hundred thousand dollars in cash after you know selling yeah, yeah, their property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to put that all in one. I said I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I would probably put two hundred k into the yeah. principal yeah. residence that you want. Hold on to the rest of the money and let's buy an investment property yeah. with the rest, yeah. right? Sure. Yeah. So so there's different ways that we could go about it. Listen, ninety percent of all millionaires are built through real estate. Hundred percent. So where are you going to put your money? Yeah, like, yeah. like I'm I, not going to create an iPhone. I, I don't have that that that, that creative. Uh, the brilliance. Yeah. It's, it's being a brilliant mind. Yeah. Put your money where you know it's going to be able to generate. And, and, and it's long term. And, right? and, and it's yeah. long term. As long and as for the most part, long, I would say you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and and for the most part, I would say it's guaranteed. 
for the most yeah, part, real estate is guaranteed. I mean, there's, there's, there's highs sure. and the lows, but I mean... But what you really, said, long term. If you're okay. in for the long term, real estate's it is almost... It is. A, it's a, I think it's the best guarantee you can buy. So look at this. I just I sold two of my rental properties now, and, and now we cashed out in order to buy new ones, right? Yeah. But there was a, there was a threshold between these properties because we bought them originally with, this, with the sense of, of never selling them. Yep. But things change. Life changed. So you got to start thinking about this. So you get into these properties, you're at the end of the life cycle where now if these tenants leave, you have to drop thirty, forty thousand dollars to renovate the whole bloody thing. Yeah. Right. Now is you kind of you got to weigh out the option. You got to be you know business minded. Is there any more yield with this property? If I renovated it, put thirty, forty k into this, put a new tenant in there, is there going to be more yield than what is today? Yeah. Yeah. I can sell it for six fifty or six thirty in a year or two. Let's call it like that. But what's the point? Yeah. Like it, you just spend 30, 40 K plus you put a new tenants in there might wear out the property. Yeah. And where you, where's your net? So yeah. cash out now sold as is, where is that's, yeah. that was my condition with the realtors. It was easy because I was a seller. I told the realtor, this is what I want. This is what I'm listed on. Go, you give me this number. It's yours, but they're taking responsibility with yeah. the property. Yeah. And you know, the house there, there, you know, furnace, air conditioner, there was some stuff happening in the roof. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And they knew that. I didn't know about that. And yeah. they took the house as is where it is. So imagine now, you know, five years, 10 years down the road, I renovate the property. I put money into it. I got new tenants and I'm trying to sell it. And there's a bunch of stuff happening yeah. in the attic. No, thank you. So it was it was the best cash out. So at times you got to think like this yeah. too. And, and it's we, opportunity cost too at the same time, right? Because right now where you are at, you could pretty much liquidate these properties and buy something in that you probably won't be able to buy in five or 10 years. Fair enough. Yeah. So I'm multiplying properties yeah. basically with future intentions to build. So this is like a win win triple win yep. quadruple win there's no other there's no lose in this at all right yeah but at the same time i think we all got to make this uh, you know you got to look at the approach yep. here right like is it the time to sell it because yep. we say long term but yep. you might look at these guys look at these wealthy guys in my area there you know they hold on to commercial for dear life yeah dear life you can't buy commercial yeah. there's no way nobody's yeah. selling it yeah but when they do they unload a building and they buy like they just go nuts yeah They'll unload one commercial building and buy like three or four strip yeah, houses, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the whole point of that. Yeah. But but I would say long term is is that even if uh, like say you buy one property and you're saying like I said I keep it forever, but I would still be okay with taking that money out and taking all of that money and investing it directly into another property. Yeah. I don't want to take the money out and do something stupid with it. Like that's my thing. Yeah. Uh, the money is meant for long term investment. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. even yeah. whatever is for generated off of it. Yeah. yeah. Whatever is yeah. generated off of it, I don't want that right now. You know, I want to I want to roll it over into something else. I want to use that money when I'm like 60 or 70. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a residual income. Yeah. So we don't have retirement plans, so this we need some sort of residual income. Exactly. For yeah. A month. All right, so now that we've beat the hell out of this topic, uh, so the next thing we were going to talk about was... Mindset a bit? Do you want us to talk a little bit about the, uh, the bidding war? Oh, fair enough, yeah. yeah. Bidding war or not to bidding war. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? I'm I know just, you're not a huge fan of it. I'm not a huge bidding war guy, but yeah. it, is, it is effective, right? Yeah, it, and, it could uh, be, and yeah. you have a good story about that yeah. now. But, so I'll give you another, you know, another side of that coin, right? So we, we, I did a deal last week and uh, first, first, second time buyers, but you know, they got short into the stick with the market. Yeah. Got taken out, not for their own. Uh, it was more of a personal issue that took them out of the game. But sure. ultimately, now they back, got back in and need a family home. And uh, we, we looked at three properties, three to five properties. This is the perfect property. Fits amazing. It's the right area. Everything's amazing. And call, like, the realtor calls me during the showing. Yeah. You know that's not a good no, sign. No. Hey, we got two offers registered. Uh, let me know if you're going to put any offers. And I despise that. I said, you know, now you, got, you set me up, right? So I said, but if you don't hear back from me, don't, don't call. Don't call I, I'm not interested, right? Yeah. If I call you, that means we're going to come in. And that's it. What I'll do is I just desell the property when I'm in there. This is not the right property. We're gonna get into bidding where you're gonna overpay for it. Let's get out. Yeah. Because it was already listed at market value. Yeah. If it was like at seven, you know, let's say sixty fifty k below yeah. where it should be, it's yeah. different. But we're at top peak. There's already yeah. two offers. We're yeah. not overpaying for this thing. So I, I just don't sell the property to my clients. Yeah. I literally instead of selling them like the benefits, I'll sell them the negatives to it. Yeah. Right. But just the fact being is overpaying for it is the main factor, and just move on. Right. So I, I just set their expectations. I don't want them to put. The pen to paper. What happens with this property? We move on. I find them something else that's very similar and, and it could work for them, but, but it's not as good as that property. That agent calls me the next day, says, Hey, uh, all those offers, one of them came in, was really shitty, and the other one's just, they're out to lunch, we're not gonna take it. Do you st are you still interested? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but that's so amateur. That play is amateur. But, uh, but yeah. if, I, if I wanted that 
commission check so bad. You would have played it. I would have played. Yeah. He would have played me. Yeah. We would have put in an offer. We would have overpaid for the damn property. Yeah. My plans. That's what he tried. Up. That's yeah. what he tried. I cool like a <laughs> cucumber, and I just moved on to other shit. Yeah. I gotta be honest. I moved on to other product that I could have sold yeah. as easy as, as as this one here because we're professionals, yeah. right? So. He calls me back, this, this, that, and the other. And then we bought a 10,000 10, 10, uh, under asking. Right? <laughs> so under, That's five, perfect. Five-day home inspection, yeah. five-day finance. Everything. A deposit didn't have to be crazy. It was about just that 20K mark, like, yeah, like that's 3 perfect. to 5%. Yeah, that's perfect. We were in control. Yeah. So that was my take on it. Yeah. But um, but naturally, if that was listed at seven eighty nine, because we paid eight forty for it, I yeah. think it, it would have been a different transition, yeah. right? But, yeah. And, and, and you know what? Like, look... Um, I haven't been a huge fan of uh, positioning properties like that in in 2014, 15, 16, and at the beginning of 17. That's all I did. Yeah, uh, we were forced to. Yeah, so like like yeah. I didn't want to. I think I resisted it in 2014 because I really didn't want to. Yeah. But then I started doing it, uh, and then yeah, this was dude. it. Yeah, because yeah. everyone else was playing that game. Yeah. If you went at market value on your property, you didn't look as competitive as somebody that underpriced it by 70k. And so you, you had and to you play. You lost money for your clients. In, in, in yeah. the end, we had to do it for our clients to get so, more money. So you had to play. So so this year so far, I've resisted doing that. There have been a couple of properties we've sold this year so far that naturally ended up yeah, into, yeah, a, yeah. I price them at market value and then they go up 10 grand. Yeah, yeah, Great, that's yeah. perfect. Like it naturally Supply started. Demand for sure. So this one property I've had, I've listed it for like the last three months. We started at $1.2 million, lower it down to 11.45, then 11.25. And now we're at a point of basically saying like what we've been talking about is okay We want to make this push happen like now, right? Like we, I don't want to be holding this property for another month So then what we did was we knew we had like 60 showings on the property So at and, the and new price. yeah, and no, no not at the 950 so, throughout the whole thing wow. We had 60 showings, yeah. but I'm getting feedback for every single showing like mostly well, all of the showings the... Yeah, so so the thing is is that the house is almost 20 years old and it's basically original to the date 20 years Okay, it looks nice and everything but it has like those uh, old, uh, you know, yellowish floors. looking floors. Yeah. yeah, they're not parquet, but they're like old hardwood floors for yeah. 20 years. Um, you know, everything is kind of old. Some of the, the house has been um, maybe not kept up to date uh, sure. completely or maintained yeah. uh, up to Builder date. Tiles yeah, and bathrooms. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, so when somebody comes in and, and they want to, like, and it's in a nice neighborhood. It's in a nice neighborhood. Yeah. So, so the, when somebody comes in, they're just like, ah, I like the house. I like the outside of it. I like everything about <laughs> it. But it's just like inside, like I got to do everything again you know what to make it to my taste so we had like four or five people sitting in the background like basically just saying yes no yes no at uh, 11 25 when we listed it at uh, 1 million 125 we ended up getting an offer on the property from an agent it just didn't work out so then we lowered the price to 950,000. When we lowered the price to 950, showings obviously spiked on the property. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, for sure. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it was me and two of my agents, like we did the open house all together over the weekend because we expected to get a huge rush over there. So on Saturday, we had 20 to 20, like 22 to 24 sets of people come through. On Sunday, we had you know, 15, 16 sets of people come through. We had a lot of people. A bunch of the people that were in there during the open house have seen the property two, three, four times. Like they've been in it. Like they've seen it multiple times. There, yeah, there yeah. were people that have been in that property for like an hour and a half that day. Like I stayed at that open house until 5.30 and it ends at four. I was there until 5.30. Um, but then, yeah, so then eventually somebody came in with the bully offer. We were supposed to do offers today on Wednesday, but somebody came in uh, on the Monday with the bully offer. So, you know, they came in with like a two day condition. So we're just kind of waiting to see where it goes from there. Sure. But yeah, like, that's what it kind of took to get the property yeah. to, for somebody to get engaged in the property and bite. So I would say that it's not something that I'd still like to do, but I think sometimes no, that effective. it's effective. It's, it's yeah. effective in yeah. certain situations, I would say. It's effective. And yeah. depending on, on the client's timing too, right? Yeah. They're like, hey, shit, we, we've already committed to another property. We've got to get out of this thing. So we have to be aggressive. So let's, let's, if you're, if you don't care, like at the end, like the end product, let's let's get this thing low yeah. as possible and let it ride. Right? Yeah. It's almost like rolling the dice because yeah. you, you don't, you know, we can't but, control but it. But you know what, Steve? The, the thing is, yeah. is that we came to uh, the number that we wanted to be at. Fair you, enough. you know yeah. what I mean? Like we did. I, I think I would continue to use this uh, thing for the spring market, yeah. uh, just where you need to kind of apply it. And people got to feel comfortable with it too, right? Yeah. And, and I explain it in a way where it's, it's you know, it is what it is. The market's going to dictate, you know, sale price. Either you're going to list it, you know, a market value or a little bit above, yeah. or you're going to underprice it and try to hold back an offer. But you got to be comfortable with that. Yeah. Because ultimately you're, you're sending, you're, you're setting a trend for your property, yeah. right? 
high, you know, some realtors, high, low, boom, boom, boom. It's all over the place, yeah. right? It's like crazy. It's like, what happened here? It's like a fucking, excuse my language. Yeah. Like a, it's like a ping pong machine. Right? Yeah. And you don't know where they're landing. If yeah. see it. I went to go see a property yesterday, uh, two acres for like yeah. 400K. That's cheap. Yeah, it's pretty decent. So, but it was instead of 450, now it's down here. And then it's like, okay, so now they're going to want between that four and 450, right? Yeah. So you kind of know where they're going to get. Yeah. But they don't want to get that because the property's got a creek running through it. So... Uh, but I, I think someone will bite, right? Like it's at three ninety nine. Even if someone gave them four ten, the sellers are going to lock it up. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. But it's like you said, why wouldn't they have? An, you know, you're listed at four fifty. Why don't you just someone just put an offer at three eighty yeah. or yeah. something? Yeah. Three ninety, and you work it up into. That's what I'm saying. When we were at eleven and a quarter, someone should have just made the offer. Like I don't know why, but the, then they got into a competitive situation. But, like, but I found because you you do have the same program as me. The lead follow up with realtors. Yeah. Like so, my, my day now before was I spent two hours in prospecting. Now because it loves a ton of inventory again I'm carrying a ton of listings my job my prospecting time is talking to real agents trying to get an yeah, offer yeah so now i'm calling agents hey how would you think of the property oh it was good this and that so you know what's what's going why on why don't you bring oh, an because offer because this give me, an, give me something in writing yeah. if you know let's see where it goes right yeah. you don't don't it's like you almost have to re-educate the people coming in because they're so used to like you know, not not doing the work and submitting offers and working through a price that makes sense to both parties, right? You look, gotta start. Look, but but not to knock uh, people or whatever no, else no, like no. that. I, I do the it's same thing. Not like not like I, I I call in. I, I call the agents that have done the showings and whatever else like that. And a lot of the times, I end up coaching them just like you. Like I end up coaching. Them. Okay, so how do you guys like the property? What do you and your clients think about the property? Oh, this, this, and this. It was great, and blah 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 blah. Okay, so what didn't you like about the? Well, this, this, and this. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you purchase this property? Well, not at this price. Well, that's great. What price would you purchase that? At? I don't know. I gotta talk to my client. Why don't you talk to your client? Yeah. Put something on paper and bring it to me. Let me see what I can do for you guys. Yeah. And then I get an offer. It's Beautiful. like it's just like. Why wouldn't you just send it? Like, I have the mentality, like, we're looking at a property right now for a buyer, and it's just like, listen, they're listed at six, 670. I'm going to go in at 625. Yeah. I'm going to be like, dude, this, I know you just dropped it 30K, yeah. but I want to give you six and a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Let me get started. So I'm going even one step further. An agent called me yesterday it's three times in the call. Yeah. She, you know, we're talking about this property. I've been following up like crazy because I got to get this property sold for my clients. And I talked to her yesterday. She's asking me questions. Listen, why don't we do this? Call your client. Let's get in a conference call. Yeah. I'll help you sell this property to your yeah. clients because I know all the information, like the build factor of it because it's a development yeah. property, right? I know about the whole, the whole process and yeah. I can make it easy for him so he understands it and you get the deal done. I said, yeah. just get him on a conference call. Let's let's do it. Make it happen, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm just based on information. We'll work together to get this thing sold. So yeah. you get the purchase. My clients get the sale and your clients are happy because they get all the information fast. Right? Yeah. They can make a decision prior to them losing it to some other buying party, yeah. party right? Yeah. But you no, have to be perfect. aggressive like that. But but it, now it comes down to exactly what you said. Instead of prospecting for clients, I'm prospecting the agents. Yeah. Like I'm figuring out what's stopping you from pulling the trigger. Yeah. Like what is what information can I deliver to you that you can pass on to pass your on. client yeah. that we can get an offer? Like <laughs> like I'm doing their job. <laughs> Somebody, like, like I'm essentially, I'm doing their job. You have to. Yeah. This is why we're selling. And we sell you know what? Yeah. And, and this, is just, this, is, this is just, this is just, this is just a job to an agent. Like some agents, some call me and they're like, well, what year was a property built? Look it up. This is like one click of a button, dude. <laughs> like one click. Yeah. Press the button. Property lines. Absolutely. Press the button. It says, oh, it was built in this year. And if you're not so cheap, pay the $5 for the property report. Square It'll tell you what the square yeah. footage of the property no, is. Like. Get that off the some guy called me yesterday. Oh, it kills me, man. Someone called me yesterday for my property in Newmarket. Hey, this is so-and-so from blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, how's it going? He goes, yeah, everything's going, going. I go, yeah, so you're the guy that's going to bring me the, you're, so you're going to bring me the offer in this property. He goes, what do you mean? I haven't even showed the property. I go, no, no, I feel like you're going to bring me the offer. Yeah. You're enthusiastic. You're passionate. You seem like a good salesperson. You are going to bring me an offer for this property. And it's 100% negotiable. So if your clients like it, make sure you call me back. Let's talk about price. <laughs> <laughs> so you set him up right before. I a seat Perfect, line, man. man. I love it. I got to follow up with that guy. Yeah. See how if he's still happy. No, man. Yeah. That's, That's fun. You want to talk fun. about mindset a bit? Let's do it. Okay, cool. Mindset. Uh, quick thing, because we went, we just joined our racing league. Yes. Right? So uh, talking about mindset and look, following Formula One drivers. Look at Lewis Hamilton, the best Formula One driver right now in, in our era. He's six world, six, six, no five world champions. Okay, uh, five championships, yeah. world champions or whatever. So that's it's a massive uh, thing to have under under someone's belt. And uh, so what, what he's into so many other things. So he's. 100% focus, doesn't make eight, zero mistakes, best, best driver. Yeah. Always consistent, always winning, no matter what. People say because it's the car. 
yeah, car is great, but you know, you get someone else in that car, they're not going to do a job like yeah. this guy. He said he's and and he's so busy because he's designing. He's he's actually designing. Uh, in t- so Tommy Hilfiger and him teamed up, and he's got his own line. But he f- physically like designed what he wanted. Like he's very into fashion. He's into jewelry. He's into you know a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's always traveling. So between races, like it's every other week most of the time. And uh, between those other weeks, he's promoting himself, promoting his brand, and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And a lot of people naysayers in the in the pits. Uh, you know, in the grid, they're, they're saying, you know, he needs to be more focused on the racing because, you know, it's taken away from his time with the car and the team. And he comes back, wins every time. Yeah. So what he said, a good, great takeaway, and, and this is what we're doing now with the racing too, because I'm a huge race fan, is that uh, he says what, what it's doing is, is it's, given, it's making him at peace. So when he comes back to the race, he's not burnt out. He's fully focused and he's there for the race. Yeah. And then the time that he's out doing the brand and stuff, he's got that other passion. It's sort of like giving him space so when he comes back to racing, he's focused 100% and ready to go. Yeah. And that's what we're doing with this go-karting yeah. league where it's an actual racing league. Yeah. We're competitive. I've been studying the track. I'm actually, I can actually visualize, can visualize the, the turns. turns, which is kind of crazy. I never thought that would be possible. But so even for us in real estate, you know, high sales, high sales volume, high stress, a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. If you stick at this thing and don't have anything, some outlet, to release, sort of passion, yeah. It's going to tear you out. Oh, and well. I've had many burnouts, 2014, 15, 16. I've had them all. I think yeah. that just the last year I didn't have a burnout. Like yeah. Fried, mentally fried, where you can't even get up out of bed. Uh, but so like, so just finding some sort of distraction where you're still still very passionate, let's say, in the racing, but you know, you, you get that outlet. Then when you get back into real estate, you're focused 100% yeah. ready to go, right? So. No, I agree, man. Because uh, like at least that creates for me uh, almost creates a distraction of something I'm interested in. Yeah. Just like you were talking about the track, right? Like it's very interesting for me now at the same time to figure out like how are we going to take these turns? It's you know what I mean? Like how? Yeah. Our first race is 20 yeah. millimeters of rain. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Be I don't know about that. And the lotus. We're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> but uh, everybody said around go around the like, race lines. <laughs> we're going to die, man. If it's like <laughs> if it's going to rain that problem. much. I'm going to go. I just want to go full out, right? Just, which is but that's what you were doing before and like just out. spinning out, like spinning <laughs> so out every corner. How much speed we can carry in the turn. <laughs> but, it, but you know what? It, it's a lot of fun and then yeah. it's, it's still mentally challenging. It's Amazing. fun, but yeah. it's mentally challenging. Competitive yeah. as hell. Yeah. Well, look at those, some of those people that were in there. Cool. They were just like flying by you like no problem despite the weather condition because yeah, yeah, yeah. the when we started to do the racing it was like the weather was like deteriorating yeah. as we went on yeah. right the last ra- uh the Very last time we went on like it was like raining it was light rain and the cars were just spinning out but these guys boom they're yeah. consistent they're going yeah yeah. yeah 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 well it's experience too right so i'm just i'm looking at that like now we have to do more track time. We gotta yeah. understand the cars itself yeah. because I think if I, if I put my bend on the track, I have a better understanding of that sure car than let's yeah. say like than a go kart because yeah. a go kart, even now like because we're rotating cars every yeah. time. I remember the first car I had, the brakes were like beautiful. Like, yeah. On that in those that first chicane there where we came in flat out. Yeah. Like I would brake straight perfect and then make the turn in. And the last car I had, uh, mind you, it was the second round, so the weather was deteriorating, but not that much. But when I braked. And then just literally locked up yeah. and spun around. It's like same brake pressure, but different car. So it's gonna be so. Tough. So, but that's gonna be a little bit different too, and right? Like the same equipment. So yeah, like it's it's gonna be based on driver. Right? But it would be easier for sure if you had the same car. You stuck to the same car because yeah, at least you could, you feel, could feel, feel the car, yeah, right? Yeah. Understand it. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. It's interesting. It's fun. I think it's gonna, I, I think cool. it's gonna challenge us. So uh, hopefully our race yeah. suits are in tomorrow. I don't know about that. I think so. I'm gonna get a helmet tomorrow, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not bike. wearing that other thing again. No. Like that, that was horrible. You can buy that. So th- you can use that for biking, I think. Yeah. I think it's the same shit. I'm gonna double check today. Check? I haven't checked. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. Ready to sign off? That's it. Yeah. All right, guys. This was East meets West with my buddy here, Steve Zelenardo. I'm Hussein Kabani. If you guys have any questions, uh, want us to cover any topics, we seem to be getting a lot of questions, which is yeah, great. Which yeah. Is cool. I like yeah. That. Keep sending them in, and we'll address them for you guys. Engaged. Yeah. And I promise to be more tan. For the next, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a little pale on us. Holy shit, I'm like a ghost. Awesome, have a good day. All right, guys, take care. Ciao.